And in the light we share and dream our dance, unfolding in this playground of beauty, naked and clothed in admiration, the awareness of our light. Aliveness easy bathes the innocent songs of earth, letting the waves wash over us, floating at ease in the energy fields, dissolving into a lazy sky, flowers open softly to kiss the sun. Laughter floats through an open door, brightening our metaphors with the transparency of change. As we feel the notes of admiration, tuning the heart to the spaces of love. Welcome. My name is Rick Barrett. This is an introduction to Taiji Tuan. I'll be demonstrating Grandmaster William C.C. C. Chen's 60 movement short form. This tape is meant as an aid to those studying with a knowledgeable teacher, but it can be used for those just seeking an introduction to Tai Chi or those who are in an area where a teacher may not be available. Tai Chi can be translated as supreme ultimate. Tai Chi Chuan means supreme ultimate fist or form. This tells us something of the high regard in which this ancient martial art was held. At its core is the principle of overcome through softness. In the Tai Chi classics it said, there are many boxing arts. Although they use different forms, for the most part, they don't go beyond the strong oppressing the weak and the slow resigning to the swift. The strong defeating the weak and the slow hands ceding to swift hands are all results of the physical instinctive covering techniques. From the sentence, a force of four ounces deflects a thousand pounds, we know that this technique is not accomplished with strength. The spectacle of an old person defeating a group of young people how can it be due to swiftness? Tai Chi is a remarkable martial art, and I've been quite fortunate to study with not only a great teacher in Master Chen, but a proven martial artist of very high regard. To see a man of not exceptional physical gifts rise to such a high level of accomplishment inspires we mortals. The martial flavor in Master Chen's form is unmistakable. It is economical, it is compact. Body parts are aligned and integrated to utilize the body's mechanics efficiently. To those who eschew a martial energy for fear that it encourages belligerence, take a look at this form. There's no aggressiveness here, no bravado, no macho posturing. It is relaxed, it is prepared, it's present. At its highest level, Taiji diffuses trouble before it happens. To acknowledge this martial flavor does not diminish in any way the other qualities of this remarkable art that many of us hold in even higher regard. Taiji for meditation, for healing, for vitality and longevity, and as a matrix for spiritual development. What is central to each of these is the fact that Tai Chi brings your awareness to the movements. The power of Tai Chi comes from letting go of surface tension, physical, mental, spiritual, and opening up to the underlying interplay of energies. Tai Chi is a way of examining the dance of yin and yang, 
the hard and soft extension and retreat, male and female, that underlies all life. By slowing down, relaxing, and bringing your awareness to the events that you will participate in and are participating in, you can more easily align yourself with the flow of life. This frees up vitality and attention blocked by stress. It makes it easier to do what you do while you're doing it. Now, if, uh, if I just brace myself and Vince pushes on me, what's going to happen is his force is going to be greater than my ability to maintain this, uh, this uh, balance. But if I can extend my awareness through my body and make an actual connection, energetic connection with the earth, I can actually very relaxedly hold myself in a position and Vince can push rather hard and still not get that uh, connection. In fact, I can even stand on one foot sometimes and get the same type of connection. So the, uh, and again, it's, it's not a mechanical thing. You're trying to just relax and extend your awareness through your body and feel that when he's pushing, he's pushing against the earth. And we call that rooting. A really important element in learning Tai Chi is uh, proper breathing technique. And most of us, from the time we're kids, we gradually start moving the breathing up into the chest area and you get a, a shorter breath. It's a, more of a panting type breath. And it, um, it tends to overdrive the system a little bit, overstimulates the adrenals and makes it tougher to relax. So what it, we're going to work on is bringing the uh, breathing back down to the abdomen. And actually what you're doing is you're filling up the diaphragm, pushing down on the abdomen. And as a demonstration, it's something you can practice, you can try it yourself, is just put something on your belly and just as you inhale, bring it up, exhale, relax. Like that. And just sort of get in the habit of bringing the uh, attention to the abdomen, because that's going to enable you to bring the uh, bring the breath down to the dantian, and the, your vitality will increase accordingly. In Master Chen's form, we inhale as we extend, and exhale as we retreat. In other words, if I'm in a uh, ward off posture, I'm exhaling here, and then inhale as I extend out. Exhale. Inhale. The, there are a number of different breathing techniques and different ways of approaching it. The most important thing at the start is to just allow your attention to go to the breathing and feeling it in the abdomen, because all of them have that in common. Um, whether you inhale or exhale on the extension, uh, there are a lot of different opinions on that. Try it out Master Chen's way though first. Here's an exercise you can do before doing your form. I like to do it 49 times. And the idea here is to shift the weight and turn the waist. So you actually, all the weight ends up in one leg. And you turn, turn the waist, and the arms are completely relaxed, so like wet towels. And then you shift the other way and turn. And so you go back and forth like this. And this exercise is called, by a number of different names, and people have taught it, it uh, one calls it the windmill, another calls it the bear. Here are a couple of ideas on how to use this tape. We've divided the form into thirds. Look where a move fits into the form. Do a detailed study of that move and then go back. Tie that in with the moves that preceded it. Each time you go back to the earlier move, find something new there. There's enough to keep you busy for quite some time. Another important thing is to orient yourself to the room with the wall that you face at the beginning of the form. And that'll be the front wall. Keeping that in mind will help you when you do the form in other locations. Study a posture until you're comfortable. Build uncertainty. 
but don't wait for perfection before going on. Here are some ideas to consider while doing the form. Relaxation is paramount. By that we mean letting go of all extraneous muscular tension. Don't mean limp. It means only using the muscles and the force necessary to do the tasks intended. Take every opportunity to relax further. Keep the spine erect, the body perpendicular to the ground, aligned to gravity. Let your chin drop slightly. Your lower back should be relaxed, allowing the pelvis to tuck under and the tailbone to point toward the floor rather than back. Allow some attention to go to the crown point of your head. Feel as though it were lightly supported by a single thread. The shoulders are dropped and rounded. The elbows are dropped and relaxed. step should be empty. It should be taken by first establishing the position of the foot then consciously shifting the weight to it. Movements are initiated by the feet, directed by the waist, and expressed by the arms. The legs and waist are much stronger than the arms. By moving the body as an integrated whole, you can generate considerably more power than any of the parts individually. To keep your body aligned, move your head with your body. A general rule of thumb, is to line up your nose with your navel. When stepping, create a stable base for yourself by placing your foot at a shoulder's width. The width of your stance is the distance across the body. Opening posture. Begin with your body relaxed, erect, your feet heels together and toes apart. Your knees are bent. 
Feel as though your head were suspended from above by a single thread. This allows the energy to move up to the crown point and connects up to the energy of the heavens. The neck is relaxed with the chin dropped a bit, allows the spine to lengthen. The shoulders are relaxed, dropped, not pulled up and back as in a military posture. Your chest is sunk and your back is rounded. Don't allow your shoulder blades to pinch back. Relax your lower back and allow your pelvis to tuck under. Don't force it, but bending your knees allows the tailbone to drop. Allow your weight to settle into your feet. Feel the floor with the soles of your feet. Your arms are relaxed, but not limp. Preparation. Let's take a look at this movement once through. Okay, now let's take a closer look. One, shift all your weight to the right leg. Keep your body perpendicular to the ground. Your knees are bent. Elbows come out gently to the sides as if someone were tugging on the elbows. Step with your left leg about shoulder width to the left. Place your foot down heel first, toes pointing forward. Two, now shift 100% to the left leg. Turn your waist and simultaneously pivot on the right heel. Bring your right foot parallel to the left. Three, shift your weight to center. Let's take a look at the feet. One, shift all your weight into your right leg and step heel first, shoulder width with your left. Two, shift all your weight to your left leg and turn pivoting on the right heel. Three, shift to center. The beginning posture. One, the arms come up being drawn up by the wrists with the fingers hanging. Two, fingers come up extending forward. Three, elbows drop and the hands come back toward the shoulders. Four, fingers come up. Five, hands come down in front of the body. Six, fingers extend toward the floor. A closer look at the arms. One, the arms come up, shoulder height. Two, fingers come up. Three, elbows drop and the hands move back toward the shoulders. Four, fingers come up. Five, hands come down in front of the body. Six, fingers extend toward the floor. Ward off with left hand. In one motion, you shift to the left leg and turn out on the right heel. Then step forward with the left foot. Shift into your left leg 70% and turn from the waist till you're facing the front of the room. Notice that you're, this is as if you're holding a ball on the right side, right palm facing down, left palm facing up. It's one motion. The arms come up, being driven by the waist, by the turn of the waist. Turn out on the right heel. Step forward with the left foot. Notice you're stepping directly forward. Then you shift you weight 70% of the left leg and close the right foot down to a 45 degree angle. Shift into your right leg. Step forward with your left foot. Notice that you want some space between the legs. Turning to the right, hold the ball. Step forward. Notice that the waist turns and the arms follow the, the waist. One, shift all your weight into your left leg and turn to the right. Two, shift into your right leg and step with your left. Three, shift your weight 70% into your left leg, line your knee up with your toe, and turn from the waist. The left arm comes up in front of your chest with the palm in front of the solar plexus. The right hand comes down by the right thigh. The waist and shoulders line up to the front wall. The right foot closes down to a 45 degree angle. Ward off with the right hand. Mm -hmm. 
One, shift all your weight to your left leg and turn to the left. Imagine you're holding a ball on the left side with your left palm facing down and your right palm facing up. Two, turn to the right, pivoting on the right toe, and step with your right foot. Make it an empty step. Three, begin shifting your weight 70% into your right leg. Line your knee up with your right foot. Four, turn from the waist. The right arm comes in front of the chest, palm facing your solar plexus, left palm facing the right. The feet, one, all the weight in your left foot, two, step with your right, three, shift into the right, 70%, four, left foot at a 45. As you turn to waist, notice your shoulders are relaxed, elbows are dropped, the arms stay put until activated by the waist. Right arm is curved in front of the chest, left palm facing the right palm. That wasn't so bad now, was it? But take your time with this stuff. Uh, don't try to do too much at once. Each posture has many things that need to be explored in it, and I guess that's the attitude you can take while you're studying this stuff. Don't think of it just practicing, because that gets pretty dull after a while. So like those vows that you made to run five miles a day or do 100 push-ups or stuff like that, and that gets very boring. What you want to do is take each of the postures as an opportunity to explore what's really going on with your body, your connection with your body and the connection with the universe around you. Um, keep the remote control in hand and so sort of back and forth. Don't be afraid to go over the thing as often as you like because each time you do it you're going to find something new. And that's the attitude I would take if I were doing it. Just an opportunity for exploration. Roll away. As you turn to the right, the arms extend to the corner, shift back, elbow drops, and then turn to the left, arms cross the body. One, turn right, arms extend to the right rear corner of the room. Two, shift 100% back into your left leg, right elbow drops, right arm comes up. Three, turn left, arms cross the body. Should be facing the front of the room now. Press. The turn of the waist brings the right arm in front of the chest. Left palm co lightly contacts the heel of the hand. One, bring your arms up to chest height. Two, shift your weight 70% into the right leg. And the turn of the waist brings the arms forward. The right palm faces the solar plexus. The left hand lightly touches the heel of the right hand. Push. As you shift back into your left leg 100%, you bend slightly at the waist and shift forward 70% into your right leg and the waist straightens up. As you withdraw, elbows drop and your hands come back toward your chest. Then shift forward, your waist straightens, and your arms extend out about 18 inches. Your fingers extend and energize as you come forward. Arms are relaxed. Notice how the hands are relaxed as they come back and then as you reach the expression of the posture, the fingers lengthen and extend. Single whip. Let's look at this once through. One, shift your weight back 100% into your left leg, moving away from the palms of your hands. Two, turn to the left so that your body is facing the front of the room, your arms extended forward. Three, shift all your weight into your right leg and turn to the right. Your right hand in a bird's beak, your left hand cupped palm up near your, le your right hip. Four, turn to the left and extend your right arm into the right front corner of the room. Five, step shoulder width with your left foot. Six, 
Shift your weight 70% into your left leg. Left hand comes up. Seven, turn from the waist. Left palm turns over. Right foot closes down to a 45. A close-up of the upper body, moving away from the hands. The whole body turns toward the front of the room. Shift, turn to the right. Extend your right arm, holding the bird's beak. Left arm comes up in front of the face. Left hand turns over. Here's a close-up of how the right hand forms the bird's beak. Notice the fingertips are all touching. The wrist is bent and the arm is extended most of the way out, but relaxed. Lifting the hands. In this posture, we're going to be working with balance and connection on one leg. Shift all your weight to your left leg and turn out on the right. Bring your right foot across on the heel so the heels align. One, shift all the weight to your left leg and turn to the right while pivoting on the ball of your right foot. Arms open, you face the front of the room. Two, turn from the waist to the left. Your right arm extends from the shoulder, left palm faces the right elbow. Arms follow the turn of the body. Elbows are dropped, shoulders are relaxed and rounded. Shoulder strike. One, drop your arms back to the hips. Draw your right foot back to the toes touched just in front of the left heel. Two, step forward with your right foot, heel first. Raise your left arm and back, palm down. Three, shift your weight 70% to the right leg. Turn your body so the shoulder projects forward. Your left hand by your upper right arm, right hand by your right hip. White crane spreads its wing. One, shift all your weight to the right leg and pivot on the left toe, turning your body to the left rear corner of the room. Two, move your left foot in front of the right heel, lightly touching the ball of the foot. Raise your right palm to the right temple, facing out. Drop your left palm next to the left hip, facing back. So after a hard day of Tai Chi, we like to relax with a two-person <laughs> Tai Chi exercise called pushing hands. The game here is to keep your center and your balance while moving your partner off of theirs. You try to do it with the minimum amount of force and neutralize any energy that's coming in. postures we've learned is the push. Push is done primarily with the, the legs and the waist and just expressed by the arms. Cross over the knee and step. The arms are powered by a turn of the waist. Turn to the right, arms come back, turn to the left, the arms move forward. Step and shift, the waist turns again and directs the arms forward. One, turn right with from the waist, right arm drops down and continues behind with the palm down. Left hand comes up in front of the chest, palm down, pivot on the ball of the left foot. Two, turn left. Right palm comes by the temple, left hand drops a bit. Three, establish shoulder width stance by stepping with your left foot, line up your knee with the foot. Four, shift your weight 70% to the left leg, right palm comes forward, left hand brushes past the left leg to the left hip. As you turn to the right, you pivot on the ball of the foot. Now you step with your left foot, heel first, the shoulder width step. Turn from the waist and you close your right foot down to a 45 degree angle. Playing the guitar. One, shift your weight to your left leg 
Lift your right foot off the ground slightly. Extend your right arm a little. Two, step down with your right foot on a 45 degree angle and shift all your weight into the right leg. Draw your right arm back. Bring your left arm up to chest height. Elbows dropped, palms facing in. Three, turn from the waist to the right, bringing your left foot across in front of the right heel, lightly resting on the heel. The left arm extends in front. Right palm faces the left elbow. Cross over the knee and step. Here we repeat the move. The left arm starts up in a higher position and circles up in front of the face. The arms are directed by the waist. Relax, elbows dropped. As you step with the left foot, relax into the hip joint on the right side. Opening that extends the right arm forward. Step up, deflect, intercept, and punch. Take careful note of the weight shifts, the body's orientation. Notice that the punch is being driven by the turn of the waist. Also, the fist is very relaxed. It's empty. To form the Taiji fist, just allow your fingers to curl around your finger and then pull the finger out and leave the fingers rather loose and relaxed. One, shift all your weight to your right leg and turn out on the left heel toward the right rear corner of the room. Two, shift all your weight to the left leg and step with your right foot. The right foot should be perpendicular to the left arch, about 8 to 10 inches out. Three, as you shift 100% of your weight to your right leg, bring your left palm up and back. Bring the right fist up in front of the chest, palm down. Four, take an empty step forward with your left foot. The body turns to the right. Left hand comes forward in front of the shoulder. Your right is over with the palm up. Five. Shift 70% of your weight to the left leg. Right fist comes forward about halfway, fist vertical. Left hand down by the left hip, palm toward the rear. Shoulders and hips square to the left wall. Get the needle at the C bottom. The extension downward is powered by the right leg and directed by the waist. Keep your back straight. Fist goes out. As it comes back, the hand opens up. Three fingers of your left hand touch the forearm or the wrist of the right arm. One, 100% of your weight goes to the left leg. Pick up your right foot and extend your right fist a little. Two, place your right foot down on a 45 degree angle. Shift your weight 100% to the right leg. Toes of the left foot lightly touching the ground in front of the right heel. Three, bend from the waist and extend your arm toward the ground. Keep your back straight. Spread arm like a fan. One, body and arms return to upright. Two, step forward to the left with your left foot. Three, shift 70% of your weight to the left leg. Right arm comes in front of the chest. Turn into the hip joint on the left side. Your left hand is still on the wrist. Four, turn from the waist to square up your shoulders and hips to the left wall. Left arm extends forward. Right palm moves near the right temple, facing out. Elbows are dropped. Turn and strike with back fist. Chop with fingers. Let's take a look at the feet. We'll look at them again. First time through, just look at it for the shift of the weight, for the body's position. One, shift your weight back to your right leg 100% and keep your arms in position. Two, 
Turn your body toward the front of the room, pivoting on your left heel. All the weight is still on your right leg. Three, shift your weight to the left leg 100% and turn to the left. Your right hand forms a fist and comes down in front of the groin. Your left hand in front of your chest, palm down. Four, turn your body to the right, stepping with your right foot. Your right foot is placed at a 45 degree angle. As you turn, your right hand swings around to your right side of your body, palm up. All the weight remains in your left leg. Five, shift your weight 100% to your right leg. Step forward with your left foot and turn to the right. Extend your left hand forward, palm down. Six, shift 70% to your left leg. As you turn your waist to square up to the right hand wall, your right fist extends forward and the fingers open. Move your left hand under your right elbow, palm down. Another look at the feet. One, shift back into your right leg. Two, turn out on your left heel. Three, shift into your left foot and turn to the left. Four, turn and step with your right foot, place it on a 45. Five, empty step forward with your left foot. Six, 70% into your left leg. Withdraw and push. This was filmed on a diagonal, but you should start by facing the right hand wall. One, turn to the left, turn your left hand, palm up. Two, shift 100% to your right leg and draw your right arm back. As you step back with your left foot, drop the elbows and withdraw the hands. Heels are aligned and both feet are at 45 degree angles. Three, shift 100% to your left foot and step forward with your right. The foot should point toward the right hand wall. Four, shift 70% to your right leg, palms go out about halfway and fingers extend to the right hand wall. Crossing hands. One, shift 100% to your left leg, moving away from your hands. Two, turn your body toward the front of the room, your left arm crossing to the left side. Pivot on the right heel. Both arms are extended at the sides. Three, shift your weight to your right leg and step back with your left foot until the feet are parallel. Now shift your weight to 50-50 and drop your arms in front of the body. Bring your arms up with palms facing in, left arm on the outside. As I demonstrate the second third of the form, I'm going to give you some more ideas to think about as you're doing it. Just below the navel, and about a third of the way toward the back, is the Dantien. This translates as the Sea of Cinnabar, or Sea of Vitality. This is where the energy is stored. Beginners should bring their attention here whenever possible. The breath should be directed here by the mind. At the point of expression of the posture, the fingers are energized, relaxed, and extended. Allow the weight of your body to sink into your legs and your feet. We call this rooting. Ultimately, you want to connect to the earth through the energy gates and the balls of your feet, called the bubbling wells. Once you've established your foot position, line your knee up with parallel with your foot. Relax into your hip joints as you move. Keep your body at the same relative height. Avoid bobbing up and down.
move evenly, fluidly, keeping the same pace throughout. Imagine that you're swimming through the air. Except where specifically noted, such as at crossing hands or in the beginning, the weight of the body will be concentrated in one leg or the other. We call that being single weighted. This is a key point of Tai Chi and it's essential for developing good root. The more aware you can become of your body, the more effective your Tai Chi will be. Tai Chi is designed to do that quite naturally, but the process can be aided by eliminating distractions and bringing your mind to each movement. Retreat to mountain camp for rematch. Here's the footwork. 100% to the left leg. Two, turn to the right. Right foot on the 45. Three, shift 70% to the right leg. Four, the turn of the waist closes down the left foot. One, shift 100% to your left leg and turn left. Bring your hands in front of the left hip. The left palm faces up over the right palm facing down. Two, step to the right rear corner of the room. The right hand follows the leg palm facing back, thumb down. The weight is still 100% in the left leg. Three, shift 70% to the right leg. Bring your left palm up, facing back. Four, turn from the waist. The left hand moves up in front of the shoulder. Right hand turns palm out. Turning the waist brings the left foot around. Roll away, press, push. These moves are repeated, this time on the diagonal. The roll away is initiated by shifting back 100% to your left leg and a slight turn to the right. Press. Push. Diagonal single whip. In the diagonal single whip, the left foot establishes a position on the 45, and you finish up with the body squared up to the left front corner of the room. Begin facing the right rear corner. Move around 180 degrees. As you step to the left front corner of the room, Place your foot down, shift your weight 70% into the left leg, establish your knee position, and then turn the waist, bringing the whole body around. A fist under the elbow. One, shift 100% to the right leg, moving away from your hand. Step to the left, so the left foot is in front of the right heel. The left arm lines up with the left foot, palm down. Two, shift your left leg 100% and step with your right foot at a 45 degree angle. The arms follow the body. Three, shift 100% to your right leg and turn on the ball of the left foot. Left arm comes behind the body, thumb down. Right arm follows the body's turn. Four, step forward on the heel of your left foot. Your left arm folds under and extends in front of the right shoulder, lining up with your foot. Your right hand changes to a fist under the elbow. Step back to drive the monkey away. In this posture, we learn to walk backwards, Tai Chi style. As you turn to the right, the left foot follows the turn of the body. And then when you step back, step back toe first. Establish a position with your feet and then shift the weight. The right foot comes to parallel. One, turn your body to face the front wall. 
both arms extending out from the shoulders, palms down. Two, turn towards the left wall, left palm up, right palm near the right ear facing down. Three, step back toe first with your left foot. Four, shift 100% to your left leg, left palm by your left hip facing up. Right palm extends in front of your right shoulder facing out. Right foot lightly on the heel. Feet should end up parallel. Diagonal flying posture. And extending your arms back. Careful not to put too much strain on the shoulders. Just bring it back so the arms extend it out. One. Turn left, both arms extend out from the shoulders, palms down. Two, turn right, your left arm comes across the body, right palm facing down in front of the left hip. Three, step right foot, heel first into the right front corner. Four, shift 70% to your right leg. Turn your body into the right front corner. Right arm extends from the shoulder, palm up. Left palm at the left hip, facing down. I've talked about lining up your knee with your foot, and there's a very good reason for this, actually a couple of very good reasons. First one is, Mr. Knee is a hinge joint. He moves back and forth, and likes that a whole lot. Moves sideways, laterally, but it's not nearly as efficient a use, and you get a lot of wear and tear on the knee by doing that. So when you're doing the postures, and this last one, for example, you start off with the feet parallel, you turn, all the way still on the left leg, and then you step. You establish your position with your foot, line the knee up with the foot, and then, then shift your weight 70%, turn from the waist, and express the posture. The waist lines up in the corner. That way, your foot lines up with the, the uh, or your knee lines up with the foot, and the lines of gravity move through the hinge joint in the way that the body is designed. You get more power and less strain. And that is the second point to utilize the body's mechanics to create effortless power. Waving hands in the clouds. You bring up your feet so the heels align. Turning from the waist. Shift all your weight to your right leg. Turn to the right and step forward with your left foot. Bring the heels up so they align. Again, one, shift 100% to the right foot, step forward with your left foot parallel to the right. Turn to the right as if you're holding a ball, the right palm facing down, the left palm facing up. Two, shift 100% to your left leg, the palms face the body. Bring your left palm up and your right down, the left rises inside the right palm. Three, turn to the left wall, holding the ball on the left side, palms face each other. Turn in your right foot on the heel till your feet are parallel. All your weight is in your left leg. Elbows are dropped and your arms are rounded. Single whip. The move is repeated here, this time initiated by a step forward with the right foot. Now look at the feet. Step forward with your right foot. Shift your weight into your right leg 100%. Turn pivoting on the ball of the left foot. Step heel first. Shift your weight 70% into the left leg. And then turn the waist and bring the right foot around pivoting on the heel. Snake creeps down. We'll take a look at this from a couple of different angles. One, you shift your weight forward and turn. Two, come back. Three, turn to the right. And four, extend downward. One, shift your weight to the left 100%. Extend your left arm. Turn body toward the front of the room. Turn out on your right heel. Your right arm lines up with your foot. Two, shift to your right leg 80%. Drawing left arm back. Body turns slightly left. Three, turn toward the front. Fingers point down. Pivot on your left heel. Four, bend from waist, extend your left hand down.
Golden Pheasant stands on left leg. This is a fun move. One, turn left, pivoting on your left heel. Turn your right foot into 45 degrees. Your left palm comes up to face level. Drop your right hand. Two, shift your weight 100% to your left leg. Raise your right knee. Your right hand comes upward, palm facing to the left. Your left hand crosses in front of the right as it moves toward the right hip facing back. Golden Pheasant stands on right leg. Take an opportunity during both these postures to experience finding your central equilibrium on one leg. One, step your right foot to the rear at a 45 degree angle. Your left palm crosses inside the right palm. Two, shift 100% to your right leg. Raise your left knee to hip level. Your left palm at face level. Right palm at the right hip, palm facing backward. Kick with right foot. This is a kick with the toe. The whole leg is lifted from the hip joint. One. Step back with your left foot one step to the left at a 45 degree angle. Raise your right palm in front of the solar plexus. Lower your left palm in front of the right. Shift 100% to your left leg and turn to the right, extending your arms into the left front corner of the room. Two, turn left from the waist, right foot sweeping forward. Arms move across the body and down. Three, turn to the right. Left arm comes around. Right arm comes up in front of the chest with the palm facing in. Left hand touches the right at the wrist. Four, raise both elbows slightly while still touching at the wrists. Five, drop your right elbow and extend your right hand into the left front corner of the room. Drop your left elbow and your left hand comes up by your left ear, palm out. Lift your right leg from the hip and extend your foot into the corner. The leg should come up as a unit, not snapping out at the knee. The knees are bent, leg is relaxed, right arm and right leg should align. Kick with left foot. Step with your right foot to the left front corner of the room and turn to the left, arms open. Turn right and bring your left foot forward. Turn left, make contact with the wrists, lift elbows, extend left foot. And again, you initiate it with a step to the left front corner of the room and end up facing the left rear corner of the room with the kick extending into the corner. Turn around and strike with heel. Notice that the turn is on the heel and the kick also extends through the heel. Again, from a different angle. Pick up the knee first, then extend the leg and extend through the heel. Relax into your right hip. The arms and knee crosses the body. Two, turn left on your heel. Swing your left knee around, your right arm in front of your chest. Your left wrist contacts the top of the right wrist. Three, Lift your left knee and raise your elbows. Four, extend your left foot and left arm toward the right wall. The right arm moves back. This move is a, it's a bit of a tricky one. And the way I uh, figure out to, to practice it is to do it first without the arms. So the first thing you do, going from this position, is to relax into the hip joint on the right side. Bring your knee across. And then just using your right leg and the turn of your waist to power it, you bring your body around, like so. Again, go like this, and just bring your body around. Um, if you start off with the foot, you get the idea this is 12 o'clock. Well, when you finish your, your move, you want to be over here about uh, 8.30. Try not to get the arms involved right from the start. 
Because if you start like that, a lot of people just like to get in your arms and throw it way out there. And it throws you off balance, brings your energy up to the line. Keep it, keep it low, move your feet, and it works a lot better. Step up and strike with fist. One. Bring your left foot back and then step out left and forward with your left foot. Left hand comes in front of the right chest, right hand down near the right temple. Two. Seventy percent to your left leg. Line up your knee. Your left palm crosses next to your left hip. Your right hand changes to a vertical fist as it punches forward to the groin level. Strike ears with fists. One. Shift 100% to your right leg. Raise your arms in front of your chest, palms down and relaxed. Turn your left foot out to 45 degrees. Two, shift 100% to your left leg. Your fists are at face level, palms down, elbows dropped. Three, right knee to stomach level. Bring your fists down. Four, step forward with your right leg one step. Both fists circle to the sides, knuckles out. Five, 70% to your right leg. Fists curve up to ear level, palms down. Roll away, press, push, single whip. These postures are repeated. Transition to roll away just by shifting back into your left leg 100%. Press. Push. Single whip. The single whip is completed with the shoulders and hips squared up to the left hand wall. As we look at the final third of the form, here are a few quotes from Master Chen. Tai Chi Chuan is the best known of the internal systems. It emphasizes body coordination and inner strength, qi, rather than muscle power, which is considered secondary. The mental concentration, deep breathing, relaxing, and sinking of the body, plus body weight shifting and pressing, generate a tremendous inner energy flow throughout the syst system, resulting in the movements of Tai Chi Chuan. The slow, soft, and gentle Tai Chi Chuan movements are like waves of the ocean. They push and merge into one another creating a continuous flow of energy, seemingly with no beginning and no end. These gentle movements, combined with the relaxation of body and mind, are sometimes called meditation in motion. In the process of doing Tai Chi Chuan slowly, the movements are soft, gentle, and flowing continuously. The mind and body are relaxed. The breathing is long, deep, and very calm. And this from the Taoist classic, the Tao Te Ching. Can you coax your mind from its wandering and keep to the original oneness? Can you let your body become supple as a newborn child's? Can you cleanse your inner vision until you see nothing but the light? Can you love people and lead them without imposing your will? Can you deal with the most vital matters by letting events take their course? Can you step back from your own mind and thus understand all things.
from the Taiji classics. Be still as a mountain, move like a great river. Fair Lady at the Shuttle, one. This move has four parts. We'll examine each one individually. One, shift 100% into your right leg. Move your body back away from the left hand, palm down. Two, arms follow as the body turns toward the front of the room. The left foot pivots on the heel. Three, shift 100% to your left leg and turn left. Bring your right forearm over the left forearm. Four, turn toward the right wall and turn out on the right heel. The right hand in front of the solar plexus, palm up. Left arm in front of the chest, palm in. Five, shift 100% to your right leg and relax into your right hip. Step into the right front corner with your left foot. Six, shift 70% to your left leg. The turn of the waist raises your left palm in front of your forehead, facing out, and your right palm forward. The right foot closes to 45 degrees. This is the second part of Fair Lady at the Shuttle. One, shift back 100% to your right leg. Drop your left elbow and bring your left palm up in front of your left shoulder. The right palm is cupped under the left elbow. Two, turn right, pivoting on your left heel, turning your toes toward the rear wall. Three, shift to the left 100% and turn right, stepping the right foot into the left front corner. The right palm in front of the left shoulder facing in. Left palm is in front of the solar plexus facing up. Four, shift 70% to your right leg and turn toward the corner. Right palm in front of the forehead facing out, left palm facing forward, turning in on left heel. This is the third section of Fair Lady at the Shuttles. One, shift into your left leg and drop your arms. Two, shift 100% to your right leg and step with your left to the left rear corner of the room. Three, shift 70% into your left leg, turn from the waist, bringing your left arm up, palm facing out, and right arm forward, palm facing out. This is the fourth section of Fair Lady of the Shuttles. One, shift back into the right and turn to the left, dropping the arms. Two. Turn to the left, pivoting on the left heel. Three, shift into your left 100% and step with your right into the corner. Four, shift 70% into your right leg, bringing your right arm up and your left arm forward. This is a view from above which may give some orientation. You start off facing the left wall and Fair Lady at the Shuttles 1 ends up in the right front corner. Fair Lady at the Shuttles 2 goes into the left front corner of the room. Three, left rear corner. And four, into the right rear corner. Move is also called four corners. Here's a close up of the footwork. Fair Lady 1 starts facing the left wall, left foot faces the front wall now, step into the right front corner of the room and square up to that. Fair Lady 2, the left foot faces the rear wall now, right foot steps into the left front corner of the room, 
Lady 3 steps into the left rear corner of the room. And Fair Lady 4 steps into the right rear corner of the room. Here's another look. Start facing the left wall. Notice as you step, you sink into the hip joint, which powers the move. The turn of the waist also causes the rear leg to pivot on the heel and closes down the foot to a 45 degree angle. Ward off with left hand, ward off with right hand, roll away, press, push, single whip. Starting at Fair Lady at the shuttles, we've done these moves before, but we initiate the ward off with left hand by dropping the arms and turning to the right a bit, and then turning left. Ward off with the right arm. Roll away. Press. Push. Single whip. And you should be facing the left wall when you're completed. Snake creeps down. This move is repeated here. We've looked at it earlier in the form. And again. Step up to seven stars of the Big Dipper. Here's a look at the footwork. Turn out on your left, turn in on the right, step forward with your right foot. One, turn body left, turn your heel out to 45 degrees, extend the left palm to line with leg. Two, shift 100% to your left and turn the right heel into 45 degrees, left palm up to face level, right hand opens and drops. Three, extend your right leg forward, lightly touching on the ball of the foot. Both hands form fists and cross in front of chest. Right arm on the outside. Step back to ride the tiger. One, step back with your right foot at 45 degrees and shift 100% to your right leg. Both fists change the palms Turn your right palm up and your left down as they drop down, both wrists still touching. Bend slightly at the waist. Two, turn toward the front wall, your left foot rising on the toes. Your right palm crosses the behind the body, left palm near the left hip, facing back. Three, turn your body to the left. Swing your right palm up in front of your face, facing up. Straighten up at the waist. Sweep your left foot to line up with your right heel, touching with the ball of the foot only. Turn around with the lotus kick. This is a tricky little move and may take some time to develop. Here's a look at the feet. Notice that the turn is powered by the compression in the right leg and a turn of the waist. Raise the right leg and sweep the fingers with the lotus kick. Place the right foot down facing the left hand wall. One, turn your body left, bring your arms across the body to the left. Two, turn on the ball of the right foot until the toes point toward the rear wall. Sweep your left foot around until the left foot is parallel with the right. 
The arms follow the turn of the body and point to the rear wall. Three, shift 100% to your left leg and turn your body and arms to the right. Four, raise your right leg and sweep the outstretched fingers with toes. Arms move to the left. Step down with your right foot toward the left wall. So this is a tricky little move, uh, but there's a, an exercise you can do which will help get the idea behind it. First of all, you've got to realize that the, the power comes from the right leg and the bend into the hip joint here, the qua. So when you start, just sink into the hip joint a bit, relax into it, and allow your knee to bend. And then whatever you're powering up, you just compress into the right leg, but don't push your body up too much. Just, just allow the compression to occur, and then transfer that into opening up the hip joint like this. So that's, that's the, the action. You're taking the up-down power of the right leg and you're turning it into a spin-around kind of power. So it looks like this. You just sink into that and then turn around like this. The right foot will point toward the left at that point. And then you shift your weight into your left. Place the left on a 45. Shift your weight into the left. And then you can just pick up your right leg and bring it across. So again, looks like sink in, turn, that, shift, and then bring that across. Practice it without using your arms first, because most people when they start, they'll want to go like this, which tends to throw your body out of whack and throw you off balance. Take it, just get control, keep your, your weight centered down, and just get that kind of movement. Bend the bow to shoot the tiger. One, turn to the right. Both palms become fists and cross the body. Left hand in front of the right hip, right hand behind the right hip. Two, shift 70% to your right leg. Turning the body to the left a bit brings the right fist up near the right temple. The left fist extends in front of the left waist. Step up, deflect, intercept, and punch. Here's a look from another angle. One, shift to your right leg 100%. Raise your left foot off the ground slightly. Two, step down with your left foot in the same spot and shift 100% to your left leg. Turn your body to the left, your right fist in front of your groin, the left palm behind the left hip facing in. Three, move your right foot back a half step toward your left arch. Four, shift 100% to your right leg, your right fist in front of the chest, left palm up by your left shoulder. Five, move your left foot one step forward and turn to the right. Drop your right fist to waist level, palm up. Left palm moves in front of your left shoulder, facing out. Six, shift 70% to your left leg. Turn left from the waist and extend your right fist forward as a vertical fist, your left palm in front of your chest. Let's take a look at how the upper body coordinates in this. Withdraw and push. One, turn your body to the left. Left palm faces down under the right elbow as it crosses over. Two, shift back 100% to your right leg. Turn right as you draw your right palm back in front of your right shoulder. Your left palm in front of your left shoulder. Three, shift 70% to your left leg and extend your palms out about halfway. Elbows are dropped. Crossing hands. One, shift back to your right leg 100%, moving away from the palms. Two, turn right to face the front of the room. Right palm crosses to the right side of the body. Both arms are extended out from the shoulders. Pivot on your left heel. 
Three, 100% to your left leg. Step your right foot back to parallel and shift your weight to 50-50. Arms drop in front of the body. Four, raise your palms in front of the chest. Five, turn your palms inward, right wrist on top. Six, drop your palms next to your hips facing back. Your legs extend to almost straight. Take a second and feel into the posture. Relax. That completes the third section of the William Chen 60 movement short form and the instructional part of our video. There are many aspects of Taiji Chuan and each are fruitful for further discovery. The solo form provides the foundation for all of these. We've just laid the groundwork here for an adventure that can last a lifetime. Please feel free to contact me for information or to share your experiences using this tape. Your feedback will be helpful for future projects.